Real life applications can be complex and in reality we might have to deal with a lot of different things like talking to a database, talking to different microservices and even using some messaging technologies in Kafka. The bottom line is how do we do all of this in Docker? Hello world, my name is Bonus and today we will talk about containerizing full-fledged applications. And if you do not know what containerization really means or you're really new to the concept of Docker, I highly encourage you to watch my other video which talks about Docker file, Docker images and Docker containers. So at the end of this video, you will be able to clearly understand a concept in Docker called Docker Compose. And we will understand how we can containerize different applications and make them interact with each other all using Docker. So without further ado, let's get started. Imagine a very basic website which has a form that allows you to create a user with some basic details like name, email and phone number. The job of this app is to just display a form, make it look pretty, validate if all the details are present and then send the details we enter in the form to another system which in turn processes this data and stores it in the database. So we have three main services in this entire ecosystem. First is the app which runs in the browser. It's called Frontend and is based on very simple technology of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then we have a service which is responsible for receiving and processing the data from the front end. It's called backend and is based on Java. And finally, a database which stores the data. We can choose any relational database like Postgres. So we have divided our system into three main services. Each service has its own responsibility and is based on a different technology. Now, in order to make all these things work in Docker, our first instinct is to create three Docker files, one for each service. And each Docker file contains instructions specific to that service. So let's have a look on how these Docker files would look like. The first Docker file is for the front end, which looks like this. We simply source an Nginx image and copy the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to the hosting directory of Nginx, plain and simple. The second Docker file is for the back end, which looks like this. This is a Java and Spring Boot based application which has two layers. The first layer copies the Java code into Docker, compiles it and then creates an executable jar file. And then in the second layer, it simply executes that jar file. And finally, our third Docker file for the database looks like this. This file sources a Postgres database image and then copies all the SQL files present in the current directory to this directory. According to the documentation, if we copy any SQL files in this directory, Postgres will execute them at the time of startup. We only have one SQL file to create a database, and that's pretty much what we want to do at the time of the startup. So now we have got three directories. Each directory contains the code for that particular application, along with the Docker files, which contain instructions on how to run those applications. Now we can simply run the Docker build command to build three images and then we can run the docker run command to run those images into containers. But the question is, how will these containers interact with each other? Docker Compose is a tool which can simplify this. Let's explore how. A Docker Compose file is basically a configuration file based on the YAML format. Now let's start small and simple. If we were to write a Docker Compose file for only the frontend app, it would look like this. At first, we define a version for our Docker Compose file. You can find a list of versions in the Docker documentation. At the time of making this video, 3.8 was the latest. Next, we define the services or applications we want to run. Our first service is a simple frontend app. So we can simply name it frontend underscore app. You can also name it flying monkey or anything else of your choosing. Next, we define how this service will be built. Without making things complicated, we just tell the compose file, this is the docker file that you have to use. And then in the context, we tell the compose file where to find this docker file. This is the same docker file that we saw before for the frontend. This docker file resides in the frontend directory along with the other stuff like HTML, JavaScript and CSS. And finally, we specify the port binding where the left port is the port of the host system and the port on the right is the port of the Nginx app within the docker container. This allows the traffic from your computer's port number 80 to flow into the port 80 of Nginx which resides inside the Docker container. In order to build an image and run a container, we previously used two commands, docker build to build an image out of a docker file and then docker run command to run an image into a container. With docker compose we can do both these steps in one go. The command looks like this. 
So we just specify that we want to use the tool Docker Compose and then we specify up to do both the steps. This will automatically pick up the docker compose.yaml from the current directory and will run it. You can also name your file something else like monkeycompose.yaml. And then you can specify the name of the file by using the hyphen f parameter between docker compose and up. Now with this command you can also specify a build option. This tells the compose tool to recreate an image every time you execute this command. The first time you execute this, it will create a fresh image with or without the build option because the image doesn't exist yet. However, when you shut the containers down and then run this command again, the container will reuse the previous image, which means that any changes that you made to the code will not reflect. So whenever you want to recreate an image, that is take the latest code changes, add the build option. Now, once the container starts running, you can open the frontend app via localhost and see our nice form which we talked about before. At this point, if we try to submit this form or click on test connection, we get an error because the backend service is not running yet. Now let's try to see how we can add the backend service and its database into the Docker Compose file. So for our backend app, we have a very basic Spring Boot application, which hosts a few endpoints. First is a very basic get endpoint called ping, which just returns a simple JSON, which looks like this. This is only for testing purposes to make sure that our app is running. And then we have a post endpoint called slash user, which consumes a simple JSON of name, email, and phone number, and then returns a success or a failure depending on the status of the request. And finally, we have a get endpoint also called slash user, which returns a list of users present in the database. Now, coming back to our Docker Compose file, we need to add another service called backend underscore app, which points to the backend Docker file that we saw before. Since this Docker file is present in the backend directory, along with the other backend code, we specify this directory in the context. Spring Boot by default runs on port 8080, so without overcomplicating this, we use the same port on our host system as well. Now, this backend app needs a database to function, and for that, we have another Docker file called database.dockerfile. So we follow the usual drill, and we add another service for the database as well. We can simply call it backend underscore database. Then, like any other services, we point to a Docker file and tell the Docker Compose where to find it. In addition to this, since our database would require a username and password, we can set a username and password for Postgres right here, with these two environment variables, which are specified in the Postgres Docker documentation. Whatever credentials we put here will be used to access the database later. For the database, we don't need to expose any ports, and we will understand why in a moment, but first, Let's do a docker compose up along with the build option to start everything. Once we do this, we will be able to see the logs of database, frontend and backend all together. And if we go to the docker desktop and expand the green running cluster, we can also see all three services running in green. At this point, if we try to access our frontend app at localhost and click on test connection, we should now be able to receive a small JSON along with the successful status code. Now, if we try to submit this form, we should be able to get a success message along with the ID of the created user. To validate this, we can click on view data to fetch the contents of the user table. You can try this again with different values, submit them and click on view data again to see that the contents of the database are increasing. Alternatively, you can also connect with the database and query the database directly as well. To practice and play around with this setup, you can download all of this code along with the documentation from my public repository. Link is down in the description. Now let's talk a little bit about how Docker orchestrated this whole thing to run together and why we chose to expose some ports and not the others. But before that, let's try to understand how any two applications interact with each other in general. Let's say that there are two servers and each of these servers runs one application. And by some means they want to communicate with each other. For this communication to happen, both the servers need to know two things about the other server. One is the address, which is typically the IP address or a DNS. And the second thing is the port on which the application is running on the server. With the help of these two things and the right access, the two servers can communicate with each other. Now, when we run the Docker Compose, we can see that Docker creates some sort of a network and it does so in such a way that it assigns an address to each container. 
the address is simply the container name which we specify in the services block of our docker compose file. Therefore, each container has the knowledge of the address of other containers, which makes the communication much easier. Now, the backend application needs to talk to the database. This usually happens by telling the backend about three things. The address, the port, and the database name. This is usually supplied in the form of a connection string, which could look somewhat like this. Since the database is running inside a container, we can simply replace localhost with the container's address, which is simply its name. So the connection string becomes this. And this is what we specify in the backend app so that the container of the backend app can contact and connect to the database running in another container. In this whole process, the host system never had any interaction with the database, and therefore, we never expose the port of Postgres, that is 5432, to the host system. Now, let's talk about the backend and frontend services and why we expose their ports. The frontend app is hosted by Nginx, which runs in a Docker container. Now, when we hit localhost 80 from the browser, we want our request to reach Nginx. So, we had to forward the traffic of the host system's port 80 to the port 80 of Nginx. Now, frontend apps like these run on the client, which in this case is the browser. Once Nginx has responded with the page, its job is done. And once the page reaches the browser, it becomes the browser's responsibility to make things happen. So, when we submit the form, it is the browser which sends the request to the backend, not Nginx. And since browser runs on the host system, it is outside of the Docker network. For this reason, we had to expose our backend to the host system as well, because we want to receive requests from the host system. Therefore, when we submit a form, the form's target is set to localhost 8080. And this form submission is forwarded to the backend's port 8080, running inside Docker, which receives the request, processes it, stores it in the database, and then returns a response. And once the request reaches inside the backend's Docker container, it can directly talk to the database's Docker container internally without the involvement of the host system. So, we had some success, but there are some things which could go wrong with this setup. Let's say that the database takes longer than the backend app to initialize. In this case, the backend app could possibly fail to start just because the database took a little more time than expected. Similarly, we need the backend app to be up and running before the frontend app starts. Because if backend takes longer time, any calls from the frontend to the backend would fail. Now, this means that frontend depends on the backend and the backend depends on the database. Not surprisingly, we can specify these dependencies in the Docker Compose file quite easily with the depends on field. In the frontend, we say that it depends on the backend and we define a condition that this service should be healthy. And then in the backend app, we define what exactly is healthy by adding a health check, which simply sends a request to the ping endpoint, which will become ready when the service becomes ready. And it retries it a few times every five seconds until it becomes available. When it does, the backend app is marked healthy, which becomes a trigger for the frontend to start. Similarly, in the backend app, we specify that it depends on the backend database, and the condition is that the service should be started. With this definition, Docker knows which dependencies it needs to start first and how it needs to check those dependencies. In this way, we can ensure that first the database comes up, then the backend, and finally the frontend. I hope that you got some clarity on the concept of Docker Compose, running multiple containers, and a little bit about Docker networking. To practice and play around with this setup, you can download all of this code from my public repository. Link is down in the description. So we learned a lot of things in this video, but the game is not over yet. We still do not know how to deploy Docker containers in a cloud environment. Hang tight for my next video on Docker. See you in the next video. Peace done.